my boyfriend sneaking looks at other girls, checking them out. I know he's looking for someone better than me. He'd rather be with his friends having fun than be with me. He doesn't text or call when he should. I'm left sitting all alone, waiting for calls that don't come. When we do get together, I'm so angry with him we argue all the time. How can I trust him? Surely if he loves me the way I love him, he'd want to spend every spare minute with me, wouldn't he? I really believe this. But it was me that was the toxic one in our relationship, trying to control his life because of my insecurity. He and I met in middle school when we were only 13 and 14. How can someone so young even know what love is? The truth is, neither of us knew what we were signing up for when we started dating. Right from the get-go, I was jealous of any friendship he had with other people, especially girls. But he wasn't to blame. It was me. When we got into high school, our relationship became really toxic. I became more and more controlling. I was so jealous, I even tried to stop him hanging out with his friends. I had created all these little scenarios in my head. I would think he was always trying to sneak looks at other girls. I was so worried he was going to leave me for someone better. You just smiled at that girl, I'd snap at him. No, I didn't, he'd say. I was looking over at the clock. I wouldn't check out other girls. I only want you. But was he lying just to placate me? I was so insecure. You don't really love me at all. You just want someone prettier, skinnier, I'd say, accusing him of not being faithful and always looking for someone better. I even accused him of having more fun with his friends than me. With them, he was always laughing and clowning around. But with me, he always seemed subdued and edgy. I couldn't see this was because of my controlling behavior. He wanted to keep me happy, so he spent all his time with me, or talking to me for hours on the phone. He was always trying to reassure me I was the only one he wanted. But I would get angry if he didn't call or text me when I told him to. I'd sit in my room for hours in rage because he hadn't called when I thought he should have. One day, I discovered he'd been out with his friends without telling me. I was convinced there had been girls with them. You're seeing someone else. No, I'm not. I promise. But I couldn't let myself believe him. So I started giving him a really hard time. I was so awful towards him that he soon grew tired of it. He started making excuses for why he couldn't see me. I knew he was telling me lies. He was with some other girl. Or hanging out with his friends, wasn't he? One day, when he made an excuse about not being able to see me, I confronted him. You're going out with your friends tonight, aren't you? I'm not, he said. But what if I was? Do I have to have your permission? What he said stopped me in my tracks. He was right. I was trying to control his life. I felt terrible. I gave him a big hug and said, I will change. I will try to trust you more, I promise. But I could see he didn't believe me. I really tried to change. And for a while, I thought things were getting better. But it was just him giving into my demands. I was too jealous and insecure to stop trying to control him. Then one day out of the blue, he said, I can't take it anymore. This time, I'm leaving you for good. I was devastated. When I got home, I cried and cried. I felt like I was going crazy. But although I was heartbroken, I was also angry at him. I felt that he was the selfish one. He doesn't love me anymore. He never loved me. I'd sob into my pillow. All he cares about is himself. Then it hit me like a bolt out of the blue. What had I done to deserve his love? 
Would he see all my accusations and locking him down as my way of loving him? What if it had been the other way around, and he was the controlling one? Would I love him more for it? A few weeks later, I was moping to one of my classes, and I suddenly looked up. There he was, standing by my classroom door, waiting like he always did for me. My heart skipped a beat. I didn't know what to do or what to say. Was this real? Was there a chance he was coming back to me? I walked over and stood in front of him. He looked at me, then opened his arms. I buried my face in his shoulders and started crying. I felt so ashamed at the way I treated him. All he said was, "I've missed you so much." That day after school, we talked for hours. I swore I would try my best to change my controlling behavior. I loved him and couldn't afford to lose him again. Fighting my natural instincts wasn't easy. It was hard to change my habits, but he was so patient with me. Every time I took my controlling behavior a little too far, he quietly whispered in my ear, "One step at a time, baby." Sorry, I'd say. I know straight away I had to ease off. Today, we've been with each other for 12 years, married for two, from our crazy first four years. Through us rebuilding our love during our fifth year, I am glad to say that we now have a much better and healthier relationship based on our mutual trust. Now we can both be at different places with our own friends and don't have to worry about accusations. If you're in a relationship where you constantly accuse or control your partner's every move, ask yourself: Am I really happy putting my partner in this position? Is my partner enjoying every moment with me, or is my partner constantly afraid I might get upset? Relationships are not only about love; they're also about communication, commitment, and compromise. Without those, there is no trust, no happiness, and no real love. My relationship is far from perfect, just like everyone else's. But I truly love my husband. And I'll be forever thankful for his patience and belief in me.